provided quote unquote Secret Service identification cards. No, that his account is that he provided the pins, the Secret Service pins. Boutonnieres, they're called. Okay. And that makes a hell of a lot more sense. Yeah, the presidential detail. Where with the, the color. This is what we mm -hmm. uh, inquired about when we, uh, uh, the Sunday that we were briefed to go protect uh, Kennedy at the airport in Miami on the 18th. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting uh, while uh, Bernardo Torres and Tony Fontana and uh, mm -hmm. Nick Navarro and Ernesto Aragon and a whole bunch of other intelligence people are telling me and Howard Davis we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And uh, I got laying right beside me a photograph taken out in the Everglades where the older Santana brother is crouching and his younger brother is in a firing position with a uh, carbine. And I got that photo from uh, my guy in London. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it in years. But it was the older Santana brother that we were Emilio? cautioned about as uh, um, being a threat to the president. Um, and Emilio? Waiting, that... uh, well, uh, when, are, when are these guys going to tell us uh, what time is the roll call? Is it going to be at uh, City, Miami City PD headquarters? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be a block away in, uh, in Dade County Sheriff's Office? Or is it going to be at the airport? And at the roll call, that's where everybody sees your face and knows who you are, and the boutonnieres are issued. Mm -hmm. Well, since they didn't mention that, I felt uh, a little bit uh, mm -hmm. uncomfortable mm -hmm. and that something wasn't right mm -hmm. and that they were going to put my people at risk. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my people not, had not uh, done executive protection. I didn't want them carrying firearms mm -hmm. and not having boutonnieres and not having mm -hmm. attended uh, the... Uh, uh, early morning roll call. Mm -hmm. Well, after that, uh, George Davis, the FBI agent who I'd never de dealt with before, and you remember George Davis and his partner Paul Schrand were the guys that dealt with Jose Alley Mann and his uh, allegations uh, earlier in 63 that there was going to be a hit on the president. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's George Davis showing up in my apartment, mm -hmm. and he starts off with the older Santana brother, because we know that uh, the older and younger brother had gone inside on an operation, and we knew that the older brother was a double agent, mm -hmm. and he'd gotten his own, own younger brother killed. That's the word we got back from inside Cuba. Uh -huh. So then it switched over to Bayo. Ed Eduardo Perez, uh -huh. a.k.a. Bio, that was his war name, Raul Castro gave him that war name, so it's not Eddie Bio, uh -huh. it's Eduardo Perez, uh -huh. a.k.a. Bio, uh -huh. and uh, brought Bio up, and I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, uh, Bio has gone on the poly operation that we helped set up, uh -huh. and has been turned around, and has now come back inside, and is a threat to the president? Yeah. And this is what was discussed at the military intelligence briefing. Mm -hmm. uh, barely a reference to the Santana brother. Mm -hmm. The problem was is the Santana boys and others were delivered to No Name Key by Cesar Diosdado, the uh, customs agent who was a CIA agent uh, using customs cover, mm -hmm. and uh, delivered to us wearing... Uh, uh, the Navy pea jackets and mm -hmm. uh, bell-bottom uh, jeans. Mm -hmm. uh, the jackets were, stan were stenciled in USS Oxford. Mm -hmm. Well, the Oxford was a Pueblo-type vessel, mm -hmm. AGR, that had picked them up off the coast of Havana. And, of course, this was all arranged through Angleton. And uh, then uh, Diosdado was pissed off that he was told in Key West uh, to deliver him to No Name Key and keep his mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little this lost during the missile crisis. Thank you, because that's where I was wondering what time frame. Thank you. Right in the middle of the missile okay. crisis, and uh, the, uh, the uh, Santana boys and the others unknowingly were bringing out microfilm and other stuff that was uh, uh, sewn into their clothing. Mm -hmm. Now, we, okay. I'll just say sewn into their clothing because mm -hmm. it was a trade craft thing on house. Mm -hmm. uh, now, was the Santana brother uh, in Miami on the 18th? We don't know. We never found out. Mm -hmm. But uh, their attitude was, since we trained these guys mm -hmm. and we were, lived with them, 
is that if they you'd recognize uh, the president uh, as he's coming off of Air Force One mm -hmm. or whatever, we weren't even informed that the president was going to go make a speech. Mm -hmm. And when we saw what was going down, and that uh, Sturgis was there, mm -hmm. and uh, the to Bernardo de Torres was there, and then all of a sudden there were a lot of. Uh, Dade County deputy sheriffs in uniform mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and then suddenly the Secret Service people had appeared. We got the hell out of there. Yep. We didn't want to hear the speech. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. we were somewhat annoyed. Mm -hmm. My guys were really uh, pissed off. Mm -hmm. They knew something funny was going on. Mm -hmm. Were these guys, uh, would they have been considered anti-Castro Cubans? These are all my Americans. Yeah, even though they have the, the Hispanic names with a Cuban background or not? No, no, these are all crackers. Oh. Good old boys from uh, Kentucky and Texas and shit like that. And their names? One, one from Canada didn't go because he was back in the country illegally. Uh, was Bill Dempsey, he stayed at uh, Joe Garman. They lived, he lived with Joe Garman at an apartment. They moved out of mm -hmm. the Nelly Hamilton safe house. I mean, because that certainly doesn't sound Hispanic, but a lot of the other names you were mentioning sounded... No, the guys in uh, the, the team that went to the airport Howard Davis, me, Ed Collins, uh, Dick Watley, uh, Bobby Wallace, uh, Lynn Clark, uh, let's see, uh, Fat Ralph, Ralph Grant Edens, and uh, a couple, uh, Alan Kennedy. And probably a couple others. Okay, so I, that's where I was real confused because the okay. So now the, the Hispanic names that you were mentioning, you rattled off. Are those all the people that they were f thinking may do something? And well, they, when George Davis came to mm -hmm. my apartment on mm -hmm. Just Island, which is on the Miami River, mm -hmm. he uh, started the conversation that uh, I would have to get a hold of Howard Davis and we'd have to go down for a briefing at the military intelligence uh, covert uh, headquarters in what is now Little Havana mm -hmm. for a briefing the next day, which was Sunday, the 17th, because there was a problem with a threat to the president mm -hmm. posed by some Cubans we had trained, mm -hmm. and then he mentioned uh, the Santana brothers and all that, like... He didn't really know, like mm -hmm. somebody had told him to say these things. I got you. Oh, okay. And then when I asked for more detail, he started uh, uh, adding in that uh, it could be uh, uh, Bio, mm -hmm. Eddie Paris uh, himself, or mm -hmm. some of the people in the group mm -hmm. that had gone in uh, on uh, Polly's uh, uh, yacht, mm -hmm. uh, escorted by the wrecks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and had been captured and turned around or had been double agents all along, and now they were back in Miami, and since we were the only ones that, mm -hmm. that knew them that could be trusted, mm -hmm. you know, of course, Howard Davis to this day thinks that because of the wonderful things we did during the uh, missile crisis that uh, they called upon us because we were the most trustworthy people in my, Miami or something, mm -hmm. which I considered horseshit considering what was in the files. I already knew it was in the files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and anybody in the Secret Service took a look at the files on us and and would hear that we were going to get within 20 miles of the fucking president would have had a goddamn aneurysm. Now, this doesn't sound like a stupid question, probably. Why? Because of what was in the files. And what was in the files? <laughs> All derogatory shit. Okay. You haven't seen my file? I haven't read uh, yeah. Weberman and... Oh, no, uh, sure. All the, yeah, I've read all that. Yeah, but see, a lot of that stuff, honestly, I've dismissed, you know, because it just doesn't make any sense. Well, a lot sense. of it is covered, but I, what I'm saying okay. is, okay. outside the intelligence mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. Secret Service, mm -hmm. especially, mm -hmm. protective research, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. knowing what we were going to be doing, would have asked to see the files, and the Bureau of Field Office would have showed them the pink uh, copy mm -hmm. that they keep. Mm -hmm. And I was updated on those constantly, what was in the Miami file. And, of course, uh, having anybody say anything good about you could get you killed. Right. Okay. So but the Secret Service would not have allowed... The Secret Service pulling those files, mm -hmm. they would have 
if they'd gone to Angleton's fucking office, gotcha. they wouldn't have found anything favorable about me or the or my team. I I gotcha. So if they had actually been briefed on this for the right reasons, you never would have been picked for for Fuck the team. No. Got now I gotcha. All right. Fuck no. no it's, it's not a matter of people think you are this or think yeah. you are that. Protective research. The hell the name protective research was secret until the seventies. Yeah, yeah. Nobody even knew of the existence of the protective secret protective research unit. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every Secret Service office has a group of protective research people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're they are the ones that uh, are uh, in charge of protecting the president. Yeah. They're the ones that have the liaison with the local law enforcement. Mm -hmm. and who the mob is and who this is and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and help plan the route routing of uh, any movement. Winslow has mm -hmm. a big problem. He goes catatonic whenever the subject goes comes up mm -hmm. because for him to uh, understand, even though he admitted to me there's a lot of theater involved when he says, well, he doesn't believe that we were there and all this kind of shit and, or that Bernie de Torres was there and what have you and that uh, de Torres was lying to uh, Larry King and also to uh, Edward J. Epstein, et cetera, et cetera. Looking at it, Bernie de Torres would have been one of the people that you guys were supposed to ID if you saw him, or was he on your team? He was He was in the briefing. Okay. He was in there in the fucking briefing. Uh huh. Okay? Now, in the book on the Latelier and assass assassination, as I told you, it's called Labyrinth. Yep. Okay? By Gene Proctor okay. and Larry let, let me interrupt so that, I, that, so that I stay with you, please, okay, because I don't want to get lost. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Are you saying that... that, that he was an assassin at the time. No, 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 no. Hear me out, please, just so I can make sure I get this clear. The, w these other names that when I was trying to ask um, what their significance was, are you saying that they were present at the briefing Ernesto with you. So Aragon is a Secret Service agent. He's a CIA officer under cover, under the cover of a Secret Service agent. He wrote the majority of the Miami Secret Service reports on the JFK assassination to the Warren Commission. Okay. Okay. The others that uh, wrote mostly was Jim O'Connor, FBI uh, field agent. Okay, out of the mm -hmm. Miami office. Okay. Tony Fontana was a Miami Police Department homicide detective, mm -hmm. okay? Nick Navarro was a Cuban uh, Federal Bureau of Narcotics agent, okay? ATT? And a guy that grew up with Felix Rodriguez as mm -hmm. a shadow warrior. Okay, now all these... And later was elected sheriff of Broward County and appeared on the cops' TV program every fucking week. Okay, so what I'm asking is, are, were those people at the briefing as well, and you guys were supposed to recognize them? Or am I knew I, most of them. I, no, I know you did. What I'm getting at is, what, what I'm missing is this. When you were saying that they wanted you to there to to, they're there, to know who was who, do you mean at the airport? They're there being fucking brief. They're standing yeah. there as goddamn government Okay. Official. I'm on. I'm on the same page okay, now. They're not being asked to go out there and protect the fucking president. No, I, I, I understand. Part of a briefing. That's why I got goddamn right. annoyed with the son of a bitch. Right. Because you know? yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to understand. People here. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Like See, who the fuck are these people? Yeah. It's like stepping into a goddamn CIA fucking JM Wave office. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. I didn't get along with them people. I didn't get along with fucking Morales or Glykoff or any of that goddamn crew. Mm -hmm. But they we were being called in mm -hmm. to assist in the protection of the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, a Secret Service guy, Aragon, he posed as a postal inspector trying to create some problems for Bob Brown, mm -hmm. now Soldier of Fortune a publisher, okay? Mm -hmm. And I didn't like him, okay, but I knew him, mm -hmm. and I knew Nick Navarro, but I had thought he was a snitch, not a special agent. Mm -hmm. I thought he was Gene Marshall, who was the bureau chief in Miami. Gene Marshall was the bureau chief in Miami for the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. Later, uh, two months later, set up on a phony dope deal and sent to a mental hospital mm -hmm. before the Warren Commission started. Uh -huh. 
I see. And guess who? Uh, Gene Marshall, the bureau chief of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, who had busted uh, the Guatemalan ambassador four years before in a harrowing trafficking scheme. Guess who his apartment roommate was? Chuck Ashman, the lawyer, who was uh, uh, Hoffa's lawyer and close friend to Hoffa. Well, you know, you'd think this is a conspiracy if you didn't know better. Well, I'm looking at uh, this <laughs> guy I think is a snitch, Nick yep. Navarro, who yep. I later learned is a, a special agent, mm -hmm. you know, and a government employee. I thought he was just in a fucking informant. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of looking at him, what the fuck is he doing in the room? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Thank you for having the patience to go over that with me again because I knew I was missing something and I couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Well, like I said, Winslow goes catatonic on it because he mm. figures, holy shit, mm. if it's real that a hit was going down in Miami, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of mysterious deaths have have occurred mm -hmm. and he might talk in his sleep mm -hmm. and have a fucking aneurysm or get run over by a beer truck, mm -hmm. as my brother says. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and that's how a lot of these people are. They're scared shitless. Mm -hmm. Well, I can, I can, I, I can see why. I can also see, I understand how pissed off you could be over something like well, that. Well, you start pushing around in certain corners, and there's people that firmly believe that they were part of something. They're going to protect themselves. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All righty. I'll talk to you soon. Very much. Thank you so much. We'll catch you later. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.